to the mask fanatic. Mask fanatics. Hey kids, how you doing? Um, you know if there's that certain someone whose head you want to have on a pole, consider this your polling station. Um, you get a line and I'll get a pole. Okay, better line than that I hope. I'm sorry. I'll just, I'll lock this back up down in the pole vault. But first, welcome to the Mask Fanatic. Time for this week's exciting old Halloween mask. And this one is, what is it? That's right. It's called Rustin Parr. Really, Rustin Parr. Now, if you are familiar with the Blair Witch Project, and I think just about everybody is, uh, you may or may not remember, depending on whether or not you were conscious at the time they mentioned it, uh, the uh, bad guy, apart from the witch, whose name was Ellie Kedward, I believe, uh, as if anyone still cares, right? The bad guy uh, who was shown in Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows, briefly, was Rustin Parr. Now, Rustin Parr was a loony who lived in the woods and uh, killed children back in the 1940s in the mythology of the Blair Witch uh, films. Now, supposedly, old uh, Mr. Parr here was under the uh, impression that the Blair Witch was haunting him and driving him to do evil things and somehow had the idea that if he killed some kids for her, she'd leave him alone. I told you he was a loony. I don't know where they get these ideas. But anyway, believe it or eat it, Cesar, a very cool uh, mask company located in France. I miss Cesar masks, by the way. They were great. There were so many of them. Cesar actually came out with a licensed mask of the loony old hermit Rustin Parr from Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows. Now the first movie, Blair Witch Project, came out in 1999 and the uh, sequel, Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows, came out about a year later in 2000, which is when the mask came out. Now some of you right now are thinking, you know, nobody would make a mask from that movie and mass produce it. Uh, Dr. Lady just found some generic guy mask and is mistaken about his uh, conviction that this has anything to do with Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows. But no! Look here, I offer proof. Would I be able to do this if it wasn't a uh, legitimate uh, mask? Look at this. It says right there, Cesar Rustin Parr from Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows. See that? And it's a pretty good likeness. Um, only thing I can see offhand, okay there aren't hands that match it, just off head let's say. The only thing I can see that could have been different is it looks to me like the guy in the movie had a higher forehead or perhaps his hair just didn't come down or didn't come as far forward as it does with the mask. But in any case, 2000, Cesar came out with a licensed mask from that movie. And the reason I think it's uh, collectible uh, worthy and worth discussion for collectors is because somebody must have been totally out of his mind when he decided that everybody was going to want a mask of this guy, you know? I don't know how many were made, but I'm guessing it's not up there with the quantity of masks that were made of, say, Frankenstein or Michael Myers or Freddy Krueger or Darth Vader, somebody like that that everybody wanted to be at Halloween. I doubt there were a great deal of people stampeding to the stores to be Rustin Parr from uh, Blair Witch 2 Book O Shadows. Uh, but there wasn't an actual monster monster in the movie. There was just this creepy guy and you barely even see him. Played by an actor named Rayner, I forget his last name, it was either Thompson or Johnson, something very common like that, but he has himself credited in his movie roles as Rayner Shine. Get it? Rainer Schein? Because his first name really is Rainer. That's uh, R-A-Y-N-O-R, I think, his last name. He has it spelled like it was German, so it's S-C-H-E-I-N-E, -E, I think. Rainer Schein? Come on, that's a great joke, isn't it? That's a good pun. That's like a kind of a pun name you'd put on a tombstone at Halloween. Okay, it's the kind of a pun name I'd put on a fake tombstone at Halloween. But anyway, old uh, Rainer Schein played Rustin Parr, the Whacker in the Woods, and uh, the Caesar mask has, like most Caesar masks, a plastic liner. i take that out for you. Most Caesar masks had white plastic liners, but some of them had uh, transparent ones, like this one, okay? Uh, which is a great idea. I wish more companies had, uh, had started doing that, especially with flimsy, thinly cast masks. But uh, the, the plastic liners always keep them looking good and always keep the features from getting crushed and distorted. So the Cesar masks, a lot of them still look as good today as they did many, many years ago when they were made in the 70s, 80s, 90s, etc. Um, this guy also has 
inserted, well, I don't want to say inserted, uh, sewn, let's say, sewn in, woven in hair, woven right into the vinyl. You see that? And that's always a nice practice because it means you're not going to lose a lot of hair. You have the hair, hair falling out like you do a lot of times when the hair is glued on. But it's kind of limited in what kind of effects you can get with it. Um, I personally don't care for sculpted, molded, painted hair. I think it always ruins the realism and you can always tell. Uh, and this guy, as you can see, has sculpted, molded, painted sideburns and mustache. But I see why, you know, with this kind of mask, using this kind of, uh, the way they do hair uh, uh, for vinyl masks to have it sewn right in. I see why they didn't go with real hair, because when they do try to do things like sideburns and mustaches, and it's this, uh, this woven-in style uh, uh, rooted into the vinyl, a lot of times it ends up like sticking at weird angles and you can't comb it or style it, and it kind of looks like the character is permanently caught in a really high wind, so I guess in the interest of making the mustache look kind of droopy rather than big and silly and puffy, they went with this. Now some of these Rust and Par masks, uh, had no pain at all on the eyebrows and he does have kind of skimpy eyebrows but if you happen to find one and it doesn't have any pain on the eyebrows I recommend you at least take a sharpie and and just carefully you know make some little just hit the upper uh, you know ridges of the little sculpted eyebrows because it kind of looks weird for him to have no paint on there other than that very simple paint scheme um, airbrushed on beard stubble and obviously uh, dark very dark brown on the uh, sideburns and mustache, but black hair. Looks pretty realistic when you're wearing it, but um, again, I'm guessing it wasn't a big hit because it doesn't really look like a monster or a horror character. It just looks like, you know, some doofus you'd see at the Walmart uh, cookie aisle after 10 p.m. or something. It just looks like some guy. Maybe if they would have made him uh, a creepy old man or put, like, scars on his face or something really ugly about him, maybe uh, Mr. Shine would have been more popular as a mask. But as it is, he just kind of looks like any guy and you wouldn't really notice him. However, that does make it good for uh, a lot of Halloween purposes, like if you need generic characters who are human that aren't monsters, uh, you know, pirates, hillbillies, uh, whatever, uh, he'd work for that. And of course, I think it's interesting for collection purposes because who in the world thought people were going to want to dress up as this guy uh, for Halloween and that anybody would recognize what you were supposed to be if you wore this, huh? I don't know how many there were, but uh, if you can find one at a reasonable price on uh, Feebay or someplace like that, you might want to put in your collection um, the likeness of Mr. Rainer Shine as Rustin Parr, the loony who kills children in the woods for the witch. And uh, because, gosh, what child wouldn't follow a guy who looks like this into the dark at night in the woods, huh? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. We'll see you here again next time on The Masked Fanatic. Right now, I'm going to go and start cleaning up this mess. If you don't hear from me in five years, send the authorities.